photosynthesis and the role of pigments. So remember, in our discussion, uh, inside our home, some of us love the kitchen the most. So the kitchen is where most of the food are prepared. So the kitchen serves our comfort food when we are hungry or even when we are stressed about our lives. Remember, di ba yung, ano, pag nasa bahay kayo, gusto, gusto nyo, some of us might uh, want to stay dun sa kitchen kasi dun usually maraming pagkain, di ba? So we all know that plants are autotrophs also since they have or they make their own food through the use of your sunlight. Remember, your plants cannot uh, photosynthesize without your sunlight. So everything that uh, your plants depends on your sunlight. Okay. Uh, life is, would be impossible here on earth without these uh, plants. Okay? Sa tayo, ta na tao, hindi tayo magbubuhay without the plants. But then again, those plants, hindi sila magbubuhay kung wala si sunlight. Okay? So, the main source of our energy, the main source of all the energies here on earth is um, galing dun sa uh, like for example, tayo sana, tao, saan ba nagagaling yung mga energy natin? Okay? Dun sa mga kinakain natin. Particularly, ano ba yung main source? That would be your plants. Okay? So, why can animals or even as humans that do uh, cannot photosynthesize it's because we do not have this what we call chloro plants so these plants have an organelle that can be compared to a kitchen and that is your chloroplast now this organelle helps them to convert uh, these certain molecules into food by using the energy from your sunlight so this food is even available to other organisms that cannot synthesize their own food so in addition uh, this plant organelle has pigments, so with different colors. So these pigments, okay. So if you are wondering uh, how some plants do not have green green leaves, it is because of these pigments. So ma meron tayong iba't ibang class, uh, iba't ibang kulay ng uh, plants kasi at ang responsible yun na nagbibigay ng iba't ibang kulay sa ating mga plants ay yung mga pigments na meron sa kanila. Okay, but this pigment do not just serve the part cause of giving uh, vivid colors to plants. They have their own importance related to your food production. So which will uh, we will know as we progress with our discussion in this lesson, okay? So, oh yeah. So, ito, wait lang. <coughs> So, photosynthesis, as we all know, uh, as we have learned uh, from your uh, your lesson, okay. so in, it is the process in which these autotrophs, particularly your plants, produce their own food by harnessing the energy from the sun. So plants, uh, so the plants perform this intricate process in their chloroplast. So the link between this organelle and the use of your solar energy is the photosynthetic pigment that gives distinct color to our plants. Now, pigments are organic molecules in which uh, it selectively absorb light of specific wavelengths. So plants have this, uh, have uh, photo photosynthetic pigments built in the thylakoid membranes. Marami pa rin nag-join. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. These, uh, ano ito? Uh, as what I mentioned, the photosynthetic pigments uh, that is built in the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplast. Now, wavelengths of light that are not absorbed are reflected. Now, this reflected light gives each pigment its characteristic color. Now, kung ano yung kulay ng leaves ninyo, yun yung nagre-reflect back na uh, wavelength dun sa mga electromagnetic spectrum ninyo. Remember, there there are uh, how many uh, wavelengths dun sa electromagnetic uh, spectrum natin. That is your Roy GB kasi red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, indigo, and your violet. So, from those colors, kung ano yung, like for example, no, 
Ito, yung sa picture na to. In this picture, sana. So, the red apple can be perceived as red because the, the, uh, the pigments in the apple's skin absorb the other colors. So, all uh, ito, all colors is abs are absorbed by this uh, uh, apple. Okay? But the only the only portion of your wavelength na nagre-reflect up is your kulay red. That's why the apple uh, turns uh, seems to uh, turn out, it turns out na kulay red siya. It's because yung nagre-reflect back na kulay is yung kulay red na wavelength. And that uh, uh, red portion of the uh, spectrum na nare-reflect ay nare-receive din ng eyes natin through our photoreceptors. That's why it appears na kulay red yung nakikita natin. Now, another example, uh, ano pa ba? Uh, yung blue, blue dress sana or your blue, uh, blue na damit. Okay? So, it can be perceived uh, with its blue color because the pigments in that fabric absorb the other colors leaving only uh, leaving only the blue portion of the spectrum na na-reflect. So the photoreceptors, again, the photoreceptors of our eyes then detect these uh, reflected colors. Now the selective portion of light by leaves also explains why leaves appears as green to our eyes. So the green color is poorly absorbed by chloroplast and is thus reflected to the observer. So, bakit nakikita natin na puro kulay green yung mga, uh, minsan kulay green yung mga halamin, mas madami yung kulay green na halaman? It's because uh, mostly nagre-reflect sa kanila is yung kulay green na wavelength. That's why it appears na kulay green sa mata natin. Okay? So, these uh, pigment molecules are a bit like antennas, uh, specialized for receiving light energy of only certain wavelengths. Now, the energy captured by these pigments enables this uh, plant to produce organic molecules or food or in the form of your glucose uh, from the raw materials uh, present in its environment. The uh, raw materials that is needed for your photosynthesis to take occur or to take place are your uh, six molecules of your carbon dioxide, the six molecules of your uh, high uh, water. Okay? Now, uh, with those two, makakapag-produce tayo ng tinatawag nating glucose or your C6H12O6 plus your six molecules of your oxygen. Remember, your uh, oxygen, yan yung nilalabas natin. Ay, nilalabas ng plants ninyo na kinakailangan ng katawan, na kinakailan, kinakailangan natin para mabuhay. Of course, we also need that uh, glucose because that glucose is the stored energy. Remember, uh, in our in our discussion in your week four lesson sa ATP ADP cycle, your plants has this what we call potential energy in the form of your glucose. So yung glucose na yon yun yung nagbibigay ng energy sa atin pag kinakain natin yung mga plants na yan. Now, so aside from the primary uh, green color plants, you, uh, you might have also some plants with yellow or white. Uh, color in their leaves. So in all plants, uh, the green pigment is the primary tool for your photosynth uh, photosynthetic machinery. So other plants are said to have variegated leaves. Okay, so that is uh, it has both green and green portion uh, sa leaves nila. So like for example in this picture, uh, it seems na meron siyang black, uh, green and ano to? green and white portion. Yan yung tinatawag nating variegated plants. Uh, remember, I don't know kung yung mga mother ninyo is mga plantito, plantita, or yung mother, father ninyo, plantito, plantita, mga tita ninyo, or yung mga lola ninyo. So minsan, may nakikita kayo mga halaman nila, mayroong white part, or green, or tsaka mga white parts yung mga halaman nila. So mostly, yun yung mga mas mahal. Yun yung variegated plants kasi. Okay? So, apparently... Uh, less green coloration in the leaves will also reduce this photosynthetic efficiency of the plant. Nababawasan yung photosynthetic efficiency na. Ibig sabihin nun, mas maliit or, or mas mababa yung photosynthetic activity pag mas maraming white portion yung plants na nyo. 
Okay. So, however, this does not mean that they are complete, uh, completely uh, outcompeted by some plants with green leaves, with full green leaves. Okay. It has been found by uh, Thomas, Thomas Givnish of the University of Wisconsin uh, that the variegation in leaves serves as a camouflage okay, or, or as a defense mechanism so that they will be less likely uh, eaten by herbivores. Ito yung ginagamit nilang defense mechanism para hindi sila makain ng mga uh, herbivores or yung mga animals that eats your uh, that eats uh, plants. No, the pigments in plants which can be uh, classified according to their role during your photosynthesis can be grouped into these principal and extra accessory pigments. Now, the principal pigments contribute to the majority of food production during your photosynthesis. Remember, we have different uh, pigments in your plants, but then again, they can be grouped into your principal and your accessory pigments. Your principal pigments, of course, that's why they are called, called uh, principal pigments because majority sila yung uh, nag uh, sila yung mas active dun sa food production during your photosynthesis or mas active sila sa photosynthesis. Okay? The extent of the absor absorbance of your of uh, the energy by these principal pigments is supplemented by the accessory pigments. That's why it it is called an accessory pigments because uh, supplemented lang siya. Uh, sinusupplement niya lang yung sa my chlorophyll uh, A natin. Or yung mga principal pigment natin. Because your chlorophyll A is the only principal pigment na meron tayo. Now, your chlorophyll A, okay, it, uh, ano ito? Uh, okay, so this chlorophyll A, is considered as what I mentioned. It's uh, it's the principal pigment of your plants. Now, all chlorophyll consists of a porphyrin ring with a central magnesium core. So, one of which is your chlorophyll A or your CHL A. So, being the principal pigment, your chlorophyll A is the most common and most important uh, important what photosynthetic pigment in plants, algae, some proteins, and cyanobacteria. So this pigment uh, absorbs mainly violet, blue, and red light and reflects mainly green. That's why mas marami yung green portion ng uh, are green na mga halaman. It's because mostly mas marami silang chlorophyll A na tinatawag natin. So most plants appear to us as green. Okay? It participates directly in your light reaction Okay, during your photosynthesis. Remember, we have two two uh, reactions kasi in your photosynthesis. That is your light-dependent react reaction and light-independent reaction. So in this light-dependent reaction, mostly ang involved dito is your uh, chlorophyll A. So particularly, it, an important layer in the light harvesting complex of your chlor chloroplast. So, uh, we'll discuss uh, about this uh, light harvesting complex uh, at saka light investing uh, complex later on. Now, in this porphyrin ring, kasi, so what's uh, important about this porphyrin, uh, porphyrin ring? Now, in this porphyrin ring of your chlorophyll A, similar to uh, some other chlorophylls, okay, it is considered as stable. Okay? So this feature of your chlorophyll molecules is essential in the transfer of your high-energy electrons. So in this ring, uh, the electrons can freely move. So that's the ring can either gain or lose them. So it's either it can undergo a reduction or your oxidation. So this allows the chlorophyll A to transfer the energized electrons to other organic molecules to be stored in the form of your chemical energy. Okay, this is the premise by which plants it's, can either trap or capture solar energy for food production. Now, Aside from your chlorophyll A, okay, aside from your chlorophyll A, we also have these accessory pigments. So one of which is your uh, chlorophyll B. Okay? So your chlorophyll B, the structure of, uh, it, of this chlorophyll B is just the same with your uh, chlorophyll A. But then again, uh, this uh, pigment, okay, this chlorophyll B pigment, 
absorbs mainly blue and orange, okay? But reflects olive green. Kung kanina, purely green yung nireflect niya. Pero dito sa uh, chlorophyll B natin, it's your olive green, okay? But it's specific yung kulay niya. So being an accessor pigment, chlorophyll B does not participate directly in your light reaction. So although uh, it conveys uh, absorbed energy to chlorophyll A to work in the light reaction, Okay, this type of chlorophyll is present in your uh, green algae and higher plants. Okay, so, in addition, okay, a closer look with the uh, this uh, ito, this ito, this chlorophyll A. See, yung chlorophyll A ninyo, pag ikukumpara natin siya dun sa may chlorophyll B ninyo, yung A ninyo, it appears na pool, uh, paano ito? Uh, it appears na mas blue, bluish yung kulay ng pigment nila compared dun sa may uh, chlorophyll B which uh, usually mga yellow green lang yung nagiging kulay nila. Okay, the green leaves of many plants change color during your autumn. Oh, wait lang. So, asan niya, asan niya? So aside from the, uh, this chlorophyll uh, B, uh, A and B, we also have another uh, other uh, types of chlorophyll. But before that, uh, let no. So in this one, uh, you have your chlorophyll C and D. So similarly, these chlorophylls are accessory pigments to other organisms. With chlorophyll A is still considered as the universal photosynthetic pigment, while your chlorophyll C is just the accessory pigment of your of, of some uh, organisms, which includes your uh, brown algae, your diatoms, uh, dinoflagellates. Oh, uh, whereas your chlorophyll D is only found in red algae. Okay, sa red algae lang natin makikita tong chlorophyll D ni niyo. Uh, so sa chlorophyll C. Okay, and D, ito, yung chlorophyll C ninyo, present siya dun sa may mga brown algae, which is your, uh, example of which are your uh, sargassum species. And your red algae, ito naman yung gracilaria species ninyo. Now, your, we have other, other types of your accessor pigments. We have other accessor pigments, which includes your carotenoids. So what are these carotenoids ba? Okay, so chloroplasts uh, also contain uh, pigments called your carotenoids, which are various shades of red, yellow, and orange. So usually, pag pumupunta kayo ng palengke or ng groceries or dun sa supermarkets, may makikita kayo mga plants or mga vegetables or frutas in which it has uh, various colors, uh, different shades of red, yellow, and orange. So for example, your popsicum or your, uh, to, your bell peppers. You also have your tomatoes, your calabasa, your ano pa ba, ano pa yung mga different fruits and kwan. So marami sila. Okay? So pag nakita nyo na may mga red, orange, and yellow na mga prutas or mga hal uh, vegetables, ang meron sa kanila is yung carotenoids. Okay? So these colors, okay, or these pigments, Absorbs mainly violet, blue, and green light. Okay? So these colors are common in leaves uh, during the season of fall. Or pag tag, ano na to? Ano ta, fall pag sa Tagalog, yung taglagas. Di ba nakikita ninyo sa mga halaman ninyo, specific, specifically yung uh, ano to, umbrella tree na tinatawag or yung talisay, uh, talisay tree. So ang ganda tingnan pag, uh, pag nagiging uh, red, yellow, uh, orange yung leaves nila hanggang sa maging brown at ma mahulog yung mga leaves nila. So, bakit nga ba nagiging yellow, orange, or red yung mga leaves nila? It's because uh, ano to? It's because uh, the the chlorophyll or nabre-break down kasi yung chlorophyll nila. So, that's why pag nabre-break down yung chlorophyll ng mga leaves na yon, eventually, it magiging uh, red, yellow, and orange sila until lahat ng chlorophyll nila is ma-breakdown. So, magiging brown siya. So, pag na-breakdown na lahat ng chlorophyll ninyo, eventually, malalaglag yung leaves ninyo. Kasi it cannot, uh, photosynthesis cannot occur there anymore anymore because wala na silang chlorophyll. 
Okay? So the energy captured by these pigments cannot be directly used during your photosynthesis. Okay? They must be first transferred to chlorophyll to be related to the rest of your photosynthetic pathway. Okay? So this pigment, okay, this uh, carotenoids is also important in your photoprotection. Okay? Carotenoids absorb and dissipate excess uh, light energy that would otherwise damage the chlorophyll or interact with your oxygen to form up a reactive oxidative molecules that can damage the salt. So we also obtain these uh, pigments, uh, like, sabi ko nga, when we eat uh, vegetables, like for example, your carrots and other vegetables and fruits, so which have a uh, uh, photoprotective protect role in our eyes. Diba? Sabi nila, kumain ka ng kalabasa, pampalinaw ng mata, or ng carrots, pampalinaw ng mata. Now, these carotenoids can also be divided into your into two groups. So these are your carotenes and your xanthophylls. So these carotenes and xanthophylls, okay, uh, the xanthophylls or yung carotenes nyo, usually they are uh, red orange pigments. While these uh, yellow to brown, uh, you are your xanthophylls. Usually they are yellow to brown pigments. Okay, always remember that one, carotenes in your red and orange, while your xanthophylls yellow to brown pigments. So carotenes include your alpha carotene, beta carotene, and your lycopene. Okay, and your xanthophyll includes your lutein and your fucosantine. So most carotenoids kasi, have antioxidant properties and are important for various aspects for vision, such as your beta carotene and your Lutein. Remember, we have discussed about, about this antioxidant. These antioxidants, kasi, like for example, kinokontra niya yung tinatawag natin free radicals. So, one good example of a food that has natural antioxidant are your capsicum or your bell pepper or yung mga sili ninyo or uh, anything na meron, siya, meron kulay red or paano ito? Uh, like for example, your ano na yan, yung Yung, ano na tawag nito, yung tamatis. Okay? Ang meron naman sa kanya is your uh, lycopene. And this lycopene has uh, been found, okay, to lower the risk of heart disease. And another, this lycopene, or this, uh, pangalan ito, yung tamatis, nag-help siya para ma-improve yung skin complexion mo. Or nakakatulong siya para mag nakakatulong siya para mas maging matinis yung putis mo. So that's why it's very ad advisable na pag ano pa gusto niyo kuminis yung mga balat niyo is kumain kayo ng madaming madaming ano na to, madaming uh, kamatis. Okay? So fucosantin naman. On the other hand, it is the pigment uh, that gives uh, brown algae their characteristic color. So sa brown algae naman meron tong fucosantin na to. So another we have different uh Accessor pigments, which includes your phycobilins. In these phycobilins, are, these are accessor pigments uh, which can be found in your red algae and your cyanobacteria. So unlike chlorophyll, phycobilins are water-soluble, okay, making them uh, present in your aqueous cytoplasm or the stroma of chloroplasts. So there are two colors of your phycobilins, which includes your uh, phycoerythrin, which is the red one, and which is present also in your red algae. And your uh, blue one, okay, that's your cytocyanin that is present in your cyanobacteria, okay? So, ito naman, meron siya sa mga blue-green blue algae ninyo. Now, yan nasa picture. Yan yung tinatawag natin mga uh, blue-green algae. Okay? So, the red algae thrive in deep waters of the seas and their phycobilins allow them to still perform photosynthesis because of their ability uh, because of the, the ability of these pigments to absorb blue light and reflect the red one. That, that, that's why it turns out na kulay red sila. It's because ang nire-reflect nila na kulay is kulay red. Okay? Apparently, your blue light penetrates the seawater a greater depth than the other colors of longer wavelength than your red. Okay? So that is all about your uh, uh nito? Your uh the different uh, pigments in your uh accessory pigments. Now let us move to your light dependent reaction. So what is all about this light dependent reaction? Now for this light dependent reaction, 
All right? So light, as we all know, light is one of the most essential components of the universe. So light is also considered a renewable source of energy that humans can benefit from. Sun. All right? Since... Uh, Meron lang tayong, uh, ano na to, sa solar system natin, that's, yung sun ang pinaka-center ng lahat. And sun is considered as the primary source of light energy on our planet. Okay? Now, it emits an enormous amount of electromagnetic uh, radiation uh, through which the solar energy is transmitted in your space. So humans can only see a portion of this uh, energy which we uh, refer to as the visible light. So plants utilize all the colors of light except green when they photosynthesize. Okay, this reflection of light makes the color of plants green. So light depends on photosynthesis as much as photosynthesis depends on the available visible light. Okay, so Earth, as what we have mentioned earlier, without this photosynthesis would not be a biological world for long. So walang, wala tayong matatawag na Earth kung wala tong mga uh, plants ato na nag-photosynthesize. Okay? Earth is not Earth without plants. Okay? So, as what we have mentioned, the photosynthesis is known for converting your solar energy into your chemical energy that is stored in your carbohydrate molecules, particularly your glucose. Okay? So, yeah. Now, photosynthetic organisms, including your land plants, your algae, and cyanobacteria, are called your autotrophs, okay? Because of because they can produce their own food. Now, the process of photosynthesis produces copious amount of oxygen gas as a byproduct. So, oxygen, which oxygen, which is required by organism to perform cellular respiration, rises into the atmosphere, where it also forms an ozone uh, shield. Okay, that filters out your ultraviolet radiation and makes terrestrial life possible. Remember, okay, that's why important and important ang mga halaman dito sa mundo. It's because sila yung main din nag sila yung nagpro-produce ng oxygen. Yung oxygen hindi lang natin yung ginagamit na para sa makahinga tayo or mabuhay tayo dito sa Earth na to. Okay, yung oxygen na yan, pag na-disperse yan or pumunta yan or na, yan, na-disperse yan sa atmosphere natin, nagre-create sila ng tinatawag nating ozone or yung ozone shield natin. Okay? Bakit nga ba yung mga ibang scientists? Uh, they are very, they are very, tawag na ito, ang tawag na ito, uh, they are very conscious or they are very uh, problematic when it comes na, they are pro very problematic na nasisira na yung ozone layer natin. It's because that ozone layers, pinifilter out niya yung ultraviolet radiation. Pag hindi kasi na-filter out yung ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet radiation na yan, eventually, pag yung, since this ultraviolet has a uh, uh, ano high frequency, pwede siya mag-cause ng uh, problems sa atin. Okay? So, it making all terrestrial life here on Earth to, uh, ano ito, na maging imposible or mabu imposible mabuhay pag masyadong mataas yung ultraviolet radiation. Okay? Now, photosynthesis occurs in the green portion of your plants. Uh, and this process utilizes raw materials such as water and your carbon dioxide. So the roots of a plant, uh, okay, yung, it absorbs water, which then moves through the vascular tissues up the stems and to the leaves by the way, uh, by way of the leaf veins. Remember, may mga leaf veins yan, yung mga leaves natin. Or yung parang mga, ano nito, ribs niya. So yung mga leaf veins natin. Doon dumadaan yung water natin. Okay, through your xylem and flu web. Okay, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is released also by us humans and some other heterotropic organisms. Pag yan, yung carbon, uh, carbon dioxide na yan, na-release dun sa atmosphere, papasok yan sa may leaves natin. Dun sa small opening nila or dun sa may, uh, paano ito, sa may, sa may butas ng uh, leaves ninyo, which you call your istom stomata. Okay? So, after entering a leaf, this carbon dioxide, hindi ko pala namumove yung... Okay? This is tomata. I, 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 yeah. 
Ayan. So, after entering a leaf, the carbon dioxide and water diffuse into the chloroplast. Okay? Pag diffuse yan sa chloroplast natin, organelles now can carry out this what we call this uh, photosynthesis. So, inside the chloroplast, photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis occurs in two stages. Okay? The first stage involves your light-dependent reaction, while the second stage involves your light-independent reaction. So, collectively known as your Calvin cycle. Now, light-dependent reactions... Okay. Your light dependent reactions are simply your light reactions. Okay, are named so because they only occur when solar energy is available. Okay, from the name itself, from the name itself light dependent. Okay, naka depende yung reaction dun sa light na na produce. Okay, this process happens on the thylakoid membrane of your chloroplast. Uh, which converts solar energy into your chemical energy. It is also in the thylakoid membrane where pigment uh, molecules in the form of tooling photosystem capture kinetic uh, energy from photons and store it as a potential energy in the chemical uh, bonds of two molecules, which are your ATP and your NAT pH or your nicotin uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. In okay. Now, in this one, now, during your light reaction, this here, okay, solar energy energizes your electrons okay, that move down to your electron transport chain. So this chain is composed of a series of proteins that pass energizes electrons through them as they reach a final acceptor. So as electrons, are, uh, as electrons move down the chain, so energy is released and captured to produce your ATP molecules. Okay, energized electrons are also taken up by this uh, NAD P, uh, which is reduced and becomes your NAD pH. Remember, pag yung NAD P ninyo naging uh, NAD pH, ibig sabihin niya nag-redact, nagkaroon siya ng reduction. Ibig sabihin niya, nag-gain siya ng electron. Now, the chlorophyll replaces its lost electrons by splitting these water molecules uh, yielding your oxygen as a uh, waste product. So, for example, uh, for instance, a place uh, a plant uh, is placed in a dark uh, closet. It literally, it literally, it literally uh, starves. Okay, so without light, the plant cannot generate your ATP and your NAD pH. Okay, without these critical energy molecules, the electron carriers, the plant cannot feed itself. So, kailangan. Dito muna mag-start, uh, kailangan muna mag-start ng photosynthesis ninyo dito sa light-dependent reaction na to. It's because pag walang light dun sa may, ninyo, sa may photosynthesis ninyo, eventually, hindi makakapag-yield or makakapag-produce uh, uh, itong uh, plants ninyo na tinatawag natin ATP and not pH na kinakailangan para mag-produce ng sariling food yung plants ninyo. Once its uh, stored food is gone, okay, the plants will die. That's why mapapansin ninyo, yung, yung, yung mga halaman ng mga parents ninyo or ng mama ninyo, pag nilalagay dun sa loob ng, ng bahay, okay, cause specifically may mga certain plants na ilang araw pa lang na hindi na, na walang uh, sunlight is namamatay sila. Bakit? Kasi yung sunlight mismo ang nag-trigger uh, para magkaroon ng sariling food yung plants ninyo. Okay? Now, in this one, medyo mabigat na to. So, in this one, uh, there are two types of your photosystem. Okay? So, your photosystem one, which, which is your P680, and your photosystem 2 is your P700. So a photosystem is consists of a number of uh, light harvesting complexes, or your LHCs, surrounding a reaction center complex. So NLH contains various pigment molecules bound to proteins. So these uh, complexes uh, uh, function as a light gathering antenna. So an electron transport chain connects these two photosystem, which provides energy for ATP synthesis. Okay, a second electron chain extends to the photosystem one, which triggers the 
synthesis of your NAD pH. Okay? So, remember, now, so una, okay, so, yung electron transfer chain ninyo, kinokote, it connects these two photosystems, which is your photosystem 1 and your photosystem 2. Okay? So, para makapag-provide siya ng ATP synthesis ninyo. So, yung pangalawang uh, electron transport chain ninyo, uh, which extends from your photosynthesis, uh, photosystem 1, trinitrigger niya yung synthesis naman ng NAD pH ninyo. Now, Ayan. Light striking photosynthesis system to excite your electrons. Paano to? So, photosynthesis begins in the cluster of pigment molecules of photosystem 2. Okay? So, these pigments absorb light and your, it transfers the energy to a chlorophyll A reaction center. So, mag-uumpi siya sa, dun, dun sa may chlorophyll A reaction center natin. So, where it excites two electrons from a ground state to a higher energy level. Okay, the excited state is highly unstable. Remember, pag masyadong mataas yung energy ng isang molecule ninyo, it becomes unstable. So an excited electron usually loses its energy and falls back to its ground state, releasing energy as heat. Okay, the excited electrons uh, then are then reject ejected uh, from a chlorophyll A reaction center and grabbed by the first protein in the electron transport chain, which connects the two photosystem. Ito siya. Okay. Now, the next step here, okay, the next step here, okay, asan na tayo? Ayan. The, as what I mentioned, the excited electrons, okay, are ejected to the, from the chlorophyll A reaction center and grabbed by the first protein in the electron transport chain that connects the two photosystems. Okay, these two electrons are replaced by electrons and water molecules that donate two electrons when it, it splits into your oxygen gas and your two protons. Okay, chlorophyll A picks up these electrons. Now, as the electron, uh, as the electrons continue to move in the electron transport chain, so their energy is used to pump protons from the stroma across the membrane into, into the thylakoid, uh, thylakoid lumen or your or thylakoid space. So the thylakoid space will have then a high concentration of your uh, hydrogen and a lower concentration in your stroma. So this concentration of your, uh, this concentration gradient of your hydrogen will drive the synthesis of your ATP later on. All right. So, because of the difference in the concentration of your uh, hydrogen, it will naturally move from higher concentration to lower concentration via diffusion. Okay? So, remember in your diffusion, mag-move yung uh, molecule in your from your higher concentration to your lower concentration. Okay? So, that is your uh, from the thylakoid membrane back to your stroma. Since mas mataas yung uh, concentration ng, uh, ng hydrogen ninyo dun sa may thylakoid membrane ninyo, pupunta siya, pabalik na yun sa may stroma ninyo, which uh, has a lower concentration of your hydrogen. Okay, the hydrogen ions will pass through a protein in the thylakoid membrane called your ATP synthase. Okay, so what is this ATP synthase ba? Ayan. Now, for this ATP synthase, okay, it is a transmembrane protein that is also an enzyme for ATP synthesis. Now, the diffusion of your uh, hydrogen will rotate the ATP synthase, okay, which drives the production of your ATP molecules. Okay, these ATP molecules will be used in the next phase, uh, next phase of your photosynthesis. And the oxygen is either used in the plant's respiration or released in the environment. Okay? No. So, so, for this one, your photosystem one, okay, it works as much as your photosystem two. Okay? So, I still have us at, on this picture. Okay? So, Photon energy strikes energy absorbing uh, energy absorbing antenna pigment 
which pass the energy to the reaction center of uh, which is your chlorophyll A. So the reactive chlorophyll, you know, the reactive chlorophyll here, uh, the reactive uh, chlorophyll molecules ejects electrons to an electron carrier molecule in the second electron transport chain in the thylakoid membrane. So the boosted electrons in your photosystem one are then replaced with electrons passing down the first electron transfer chain from your photosystem two. Now, as what we had mentioned earlier, the electron transport, the second R, the second electron transport chain passes the electrons to a molecule of NAD P, so re do, reducing it to NAD pH. Remember, na-reduce siya, yung NAD P ninyo, na-reduce siya into your NAD pH. Ibig sabihin niya, nagkaroon siya ng gaining of your electron. So this NAD pH is the electron carrier that will reduce your carbon dioxide in the light-independent reactions, while your ATP will provide the energy. Ang role ni NAD pH ninyo is the electron carrier na i-reduce niya yung carbon dioxide niyo later on. Okay? While your ATP kanina na synthesize before this uh, second ele electron transport chain, siya yung mag-provide ng energy para sa uh, photosynthesis ninyo. Now, Okay. Now, for this uh, electron flow in your light dependent reaction, we have your cyclic, non cyclic pathway and your uh, cyclic pathway. Kasi. Now, the photosystems of the thylakoid membrane work together in a set of reactions called your non cyclic cyclic pathways of photosynthesis. So these reaction, uh, reactions begin when the energy being passed among light harvesting complexes reaches your photosystem too. So at the center of each photosystem is a special pair of your chlorophyll A molecules. Okay, when a photosystem absorbs energy, electrons are ejected in pairs. Okay, these electrons immediately enter an electron transfer chain in your thylakoid membrane. Now, the cyclic pathway is the standard of a standard, it's a standard mechanism of your light dependent reaction. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, for the cyclic pathway naman, yeah. Ayan, cyclic pathway. For your cyclic pathway, in this pathway, okay, at high oxygen levels, now, or when that pH accumulates uh, in the stroma, the non-cyclic pathway stalls. So even when the non-cyclic pathway is not running, a cell can continue producing your ATP molecules with this ATP uh, with this cyclic pathway. So this pathway in, in it involves uh, the photosystem one and the electron transport chain on both of its side that cycles electrons back to it. Okay, this chain that acts in the cyclic pathway uses the electron's energy to move hydrogens into the thylakoid compartment. So however, okay, the net pH does not form because electrons at the end of this chain are accepted, accepted by the photosystem one. Okay, not not P. Okay, hindi not P yung ma-accept. Kung baga, uh, ano to? yung not pH ninyo, hindi siya mag-perform because sa end ng electron transport chain na to, sa may photosystem 1 ninyo, hindi siya magre receive ng electrons ninyo. Okay? Now, the resulting hydrogen ion gradient uh, drives this ATP formation uh, just as it does in the non-cyclic pathway. So oxygen does not form either because the photosystem 1 does not rely on your photoly photolysis or, or to resupply uh, itself with your electrons. Now, this cyclic pathway is also found to have a contribution to your photo protection. Now, okay, so the process okay, for this ATP generation in your light dependent reaction, the process by which the light energy is harnessed to produce ATP and ADP from ATP molecules in light dependent, depend, uh, dependent reaction is your, called your photophosphorylation. Bakit tinawag natin siyang photophosphorylation? Remember, 
phosphorylation is the addition of your uh, organic phosphate to your ADP. But then again, we are discussing about this uh, photosynthesis. That's why it is called as the photophosphorylation. Okay? Kasi nagamit siya dun sa mga photosynthesis natin. Nag-add ng inorganic phosphate dun sa ADP ninyo during your photosynthesis. Now, during this process, inorganic phosphate is then added to your uh, ADP. During your non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation, energy from your electrons of uh, photosystem 2 is used to pump protons from the stroma to the thylakoid space. For your cyclic photo uh, uh, phos photo phosphorylation naman is important to create ADP and maintain that pH in the right proportion. So an ATP is uh, ATP is to not pH ratio for the next stage of your photosynthesis. Okay, next stage of your photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle is usually three is to two because eighteen ATP and twelve not pH molecules are required to synthesize one hexose or your glucose molecules from your six carbon mo uh, carbon dioxide molecules. Now, this is the summary of the energetics of your light dependent reactions. Uh, of your light dependent reactions. So, ang nagiging input natin is your 12 hydrogen, uh, your water, plus 12 uh, NAD P, plus 18 ADP, plus 18 inorganic phosphate, plus your light energy and your chlorophyll. So, ang nagiging output niya is your 6 molecules of your oxygen, plus 12 NAD pH, and your 18 ATP. Okay? So, ito, gagamitin tong output na to it's ito yung gagamitin natin mamaya for your uh ano to for your calvin cycle which is your next which is the next stage for your uh photosynthesis now the next stage of your photosynthesis is your calvin cycle so what is all about this calvin cycle okay now the calvin cycle Okay. So, have you ever wondered whether or not photosynthesis persists in the absence of light? During night or at night, is nagkakaroon pa rin ng photosynthesis dun sa plants niyo. Okay. The second phase of your photosynthesis, which likewise happens in your uh, chloroplast, functions as a sugar factory. Okay. It uses carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to synthesize a six-carbon sugar known as your glucose. Now, this phase is considered a site. It's cyclic because its uh, starting material is being regenerated. Bakit natin siya tina tinatawag na cyclic pathway or cyclic? Okay, remember, uh, ang gagamitin natin dito is yung na-regenerate na ng na mga materials. Okay? So, aside from being the byproduct of your photosynthesis, glucose is the primary source of your energy for the cellular, uh, for, for our cellular respiration in all Almost all organisms. So lahat tayo nakadepende or lahat mostly ng nabubuhay dito sa mundong ito is nakadepende siya sa mga uh, this, from this five primary source of energy which are your plants. Now in, in this one, we're going to discuss about the second uh, stage of your photosynthesis. So ano ba tong second stage of na to? Ayan. Now, for this one, the second stage, okay? So, photosynthesis, as what we have mentioned earlier, meron siyang dalawang uh, re major reaction. Light-dependent reaction and light-independent reaction. So, tapos na tayo kanina sa light-independent reaction. So, light-dependent reaction, uh, uh, paano ito? Uh, pagkatapos ng light-dependent reaction, mag-proposition -pro -pro sa may light-independent reaction natin, which also called your light independent uh, which also called your Calvin cycle. Now, for the Calvin cycle, actually, ang buong pangalan nitong Calvin cycle na to is your uh, Calvin-Venson cycle. Uh, so this Calvin, uh, the enzyme-mediated uh, reactions uh, of the Calvin-Venson cycle or your simply your Calvin cycle ultimately produce glucose in the fluid-filled stroma of your chloroplast. So these reactions are light independent because energy from photons is not directly require, required for the chemical reactions to proceed. From the, uh, from the, uh, from the uh, reaction of the name itself, light independent, hindi niya kinakailangan ng light para makapag-proceed yung reaction. Okay? So yung photons 
is not uh, directly required okay, para mag-proceed yung chemical reaction natin. Instead, ginagamit natin yung uh, na produce natin kanina sa may uh, light-dependent reaction na ATP at saka not pH. Okay? Yung not pH, yun yung gagamitin natin. Okay? While your ATP, yan yung mag-provide ng energy para makapag-take place yung Calvin cycle niyo. Okay? So, it, they run on the ATP and not pH molecules generated from your light-dependent reaction. So, most the most important input of the Calvin cycle is the carbon dioxide that comes from the atmosphere via the, uh, via the stoma, stoma talib of leaves. Okay? This is a carbon, uh, carbon, yung carbon dioxide kasi ninyo, papasok, papasok yan sa small opening ng leaves natin, which is called your stomata. Okay? So in this process, the starting material, okay, yung starting material natin alongside uh, the carbon dioxide, with the carbon dioxide, is a 5-carbon uh, sugar called your ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. Or your uh, simply, it's it's your uh, ribulose biphosphate, okay? Which is also generated for the use in the succeeding rounds of the calopin cycle. At ito siya. Okay? As in Okay, yung... Di ba sabi natin kanina, ang kinakailangan natin kanina is yung uh, root BP ninyo. Okay? or your ribulose biphosphate. Now, we have three uh, phases of your uh, light-independent independent reaction kasi. Your fixation, your ano ba yan? Uh, reduction, your regeneration. So, ano yung nangyayari dito? First, sa fixation ninyo, the process of incorporating carbon atoms from the inorganic source into an organic molecules is called your carbon fixation. Okay, nag-i-incorporate ka ng carbon atoms from an organic molecules or in organic source to an organic molecule. So, yun yung tinatawag natin carbon fixation. Now, during this carbon fixation of the Calvin cycle, okay, so, or ito, yung phase 1 ninyo, the enzyme Rubisco or your ribulose biphosphate carboxylase Okay? Yan yung buong pangalan niya. Remember that? Ribulose biphosphate carboxylase. It catalyzes the reaction between the carbon dioxide and the 5-carbon sugar uh, uh, ribulose biphosphate. Remember, kanina, di ba, para makapag-start yung Calvin cycle natin, kinakailangan natin ng uh, paano ito, carbon dioxide plus your 5-carbon na uh, ribulose biphosphate or your root BP. Okay? Para ma-catalyze ma natin yun, kinakailangan natin yung enzyme na Rubisco. Ano yung Rubisco na yan? Okay? So, yun yung ribulose biphosphate carboxylase ninyo. Okay? This process results in the formation of an unstable 6-carbon molecule, which spontaneously splits the 3-carbon organic acids, the 3-phosphoglycerate, or your 3-PGA. Okay? Which continue in the cycle. So, pag nakatalyze na tong or nagkaroon na ng reaction yung carbon dioxide ninyo and your 5-carbon sugar na RUBP, maproproduce naman yung 3-carbon, 2-3-carbon uh, organic acids ninyo, which is your 3-phosphoglycerate or your 3-PGA. Ito siya. Okay. Naproproduce yung 3-PGA ninyo pag nakaroon na tayo ng uh, reaction between your carbon dioxide and your 5-carbon sugar na RUBP through the help of your Rubisco. Again, inakailang, bakit meron na namang enzyme dito? Remember, your enzyme, pinapabilis niya yung reaction. At mas mababa rin yung nagagamit natin na mga energy or yung energy natin. Now, in this one, sabi ko nga kanina, your phase one results in the formation of an unstable 6-carbon molecule which spontaneously splits into your 3-PGA. Now, this in this sorry. Now in this one, okay, we will proceed with the reduction phase. So during your reduction phase, ano naman to reduction phase na to? Okay. For this reduction phase, or it, uh, your phase 2 is termed as your reduction because the process involves the gaining of your electrons from your NAD P. Okay, mare-reduce siya. Nagkakaroon ng reduction. 
Okay, di ba? Na, Napaka-ironic. Nag-gain siya ng electron, pero nag, nagkaroon siya, pero na-reduce siya. Okay? So, that's your fun. Uh, oxidation reaction. Now, during this reduction phase kasi, two chemical reactions use energy from ATP and electrons. It donated from your NAD pH to reduce molecules of 3PGA into energy-rich 3-carbon sugars. The, uh, the, the, the three uh, carbon sugars ito are your uh, the, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. So this is a, this stage is called the reduction uh, reaction because uh, it involves the gaining of your electrons from your NAD pH. Wag kayo malilito. Pag sinabi natin gaining of your electrons, remember in your oxidation reaction or yeah, oxidation reduction reaction or your redox reaction, pag nag-gain ng electron yung uh, molecule or your NAD pH, for example, ang process yan is reduction. Okay? Pag nag naman, it's your oxidation. Okay, the resulting ADP and your NADP molecules return to the light-dependent reactions for them to be re-energized. Remember, pag dito sa reduction phase na to, nagamit na natin yung uh, NADP na to, baba, at saka yung ATP, babalik ulit sila dun sa uh, light-dependent reaction para may re-energize re re ulit sila. Magkaroon ulit sila ng uh, silbi, kumbaga. Ito siya. Okay. So, ATP energy is donated from... So, after the reduction process, one phosphate group and electrons are transferred to the PGA, thus also forming ADP and NADP. So, this will return to the light-dependent reaction for them to be re-energized. Now, since bumalik na si ATP at ADP ninyo, uh, ano si A ADP at si NADP ninyo, Doon sa may light-dependent reaction na yun. Yung phase 3 natin, yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, regeneration, which is your phase 3. Phase 3 is termed as the regeneration because the process involves regenerating your rube BP or your ribulose bite phosphate. Okay? So it's a cycle lang. Uh, in this one, Uh, to complete uh, the Calvin cycle, as what I mentioned, this uh, ribulose biphosphate will be or must be regenerated. Okay. Now, in this phase, for every three carbon dioxide molecules fixed, remember, fixed, ha? Huh? One G3P molecule leaves the cycle as a product. Okay. Isang G3P ang umaalis as a byproduct or as a product. So this molecule contributes to the formation of the carbohydrate molecules. Yung so G3P natin, yan yung isang na donate na molecule para makakaroon tayo ng formation of your carbohydrate molecule, which is commonly known as our glucose. Now, during the regeneration stage, a series of chemical reactions utilizes energy from ATP to rearrange the atoms in the remaining five G3P molecules for a total of 15 carbon atoms. Okay, into three molecules of your true, uh, uh, three molecules of your uh, ribulose biphosphate. Okay. Now, ito siya. So, the process, in this process, it enables the cycle to replenish this uh, ribulose biphosphate or your root BP for the succeeding carbon fixation reaction. Remember, babalik lang siya. Okay? Now, take note that in the photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis uh, equation, six molecules of carbon dioxide are needed. Okay? Hence, all the products discussed uh, uh, will be doubled since it only uh, talks about the products when three molecules of carbon dioxide are fixed. So also bear in mind that the two G3P molecules, which is a, which has a total of six carbons, are needed to make glucose. Okay, likewise, a total of your six carbons. Now, for the product of your carbon Calvin cycle, in this one, it takes six turns. Remember, six turns of the Calvin cycle to fix carbon atoms from the six carbon 
dioxide molecules to produce one hexose or to produce this hexose glucose. Six turns ng Calvin cycle ninyo ang kinakailangan. Okay? Para makapag-produce tayo ng glucose. Now, during the Calvin cycle, there is one G3 uh, molecule that leaves the cycle as a product. Okay? For every three carbon dioxide fixed. So, for every three molecules of carbon dioxide fixed that are uh, and reduced uh, to G3P, these six ATPs and six that pH were used. So, in addition of these uh, three ATPs is needed during the uh, generation of your RUBP or your ribulose biphosphate. Okay? So, a total of six carbon dioxide molecules are needed to produce one molecule of six carbon glucose or your C6H12O6. Thus, multiplying uh, with the ATP and that, P, uh, that pH requirements, it means that a total of needed 18 ATP and 12 nat pH molecules. As this region, uh, in the following region of your chloroplast, ito yung nagiging, uh, uh, ano na ito? Uh, chemical reaction natin and with the produced na, na produced natin na mga uh, byproduct. So, the tylacoid on your light dependent reaction, kung kanina, gumamit tayo ng 12 uh, waters, 12 molecules of waters, plus your 18 ADP, plus 18 uh, inorganic phosphate, plus 12 NADP, will, will give us your 6, car, uh, six oxygen, 6 molecules of oxygen, plus ATP, uh, 18 ATP, and your uh, 12 NADP. Remember, yung car, uh, oxygen ninyo, yan yung nare-release na uh, nare-release nare dun sa uh, environment natin or ginagamit din ng plus natin for respiration. And your 18 AD, ATP and 12 nat pH dun sa light-dependent reaction ninyo, yan naman yung gagamitin natin for this, uh, the light-independent reaction. Okay? So in your light-independent reaction, again, gagamit tayo ng 6 molecules of your carbon dioxide. Okay? Plus yung, yung sa may uh, product natin sa light dependent reaction. So which are your uh, which is your 18 ATP plus 12 nat pH. Dito magkakaroon tayo ng 6 turns dun sa Calvin cycle natin or sa light independent reaction natin to produce this what we call to produce this C6H12O6 plus 6 molecules of hydrogen of uh, water plus 18 ADP plus 18 inorganic phosphate plus 12 nat P. Now for the overall uh, photosynthetic uh, reaction, the, ngayon, since coupling reaction ang mangyayari dito, six molecules of your carbon dioxide plus six molecules of your H2O plus 18 ATP plus 12 nat pH will give us your C6H12O6 plus six molecules of your oxygen plus 18 ADP plus 18 in organic phosphate plus 12 nat P. Okay? In suma total, the overall photosynthetic reaction, simply C6, uh, 6 carbon uh, dioxide plus 6 molecules of your uh, H2O will give us your C6H12O6 plus 6 molecules of your oxygen. Yun lang yun. Okay? So that is all about your uh, photosynthesis, the light-dependent reaction, and your light-independent reaction. Okay? So, any... Uh, I'm not going to plan for your questions anymore. If you have any questions, feel free to message me na lang because we will proceed with your uh, week 7 now since it's already... I think it's 8, 8.20 8.20 and I'm planning on uh, finishing the discussion until 9 p.m. only. Para makapagpahinga naman kayo. No, I know some of you nag-enjoy na kanina sa mga malls. Okay, now. So, this is recorded naman. I will be sending this in our FB page. So, if you if you want to watch it again, so you may watch it again. Okay? So, let's proceed to your, with your week 7 lesson. Uh, which is your cellular respiration. Asan na? Wait lang, hanapin ko lang. Ayan. Cellular respiration. Ayan.
Ayan, medyo mahaba-haba to. Wala, nakapatay. Ayan, I made my, I made my cousin, sir. Ayan, lahat ba kayo nagpan na? Nag-dinner na? Ayan. Yes, po. Ayan, maganda po. Ah, di pa. Ah, di pa. So, I hope you... Ah, hindi pa. So, habang nagdi-discuss ako, pwede kayong kumain. Okay? So, feel free to eat muna. No, habang nagdi-discuss ako. So, no pressure naman. Pero naman kayo nakikita na kumakain. So, okay lang kumain kayo. Ayan. Kung kanina sana, hindi sana, kung hindi sana nag-burn out, hindi tapos na tayo. Okay, saan na yun? Ayan. Let me present again. So, we have 113. We are 113 here. Uh, for cellular respiration, yeah. in the role of your mitochondrion or your mitochondria. Now, so you have already, uh, you may have already, or you may already have felt exhausted after uh, publishing piles of work several times in your life. Diba? Pagkawin ninyo, pagod na pagod yung katawan ninyo. Nag minsan nagre-reklamo na kayo, ang dami, hindi na pinapagawa ng mga teachers namin. So, hindi lang nila alam, napapagod din kami. Parang gano'n. Now, in school, no, you always spend energy doing uh, lots of activities. So, lahat yan. Okay? So, habang nag-aaral kayo, or habang kasi nakikinig na lang kayo, or nag-iisip, okay? gumagamit na tayo ng energy. And, pag kaya minsan pag uwi natin when you when you get home okay kahit na ayaw mong gawin uh, you still manage to do your homework after a tiring day in school so after doing your homework there are stocks of plates on the sink okay di ba minsan tatawagin ka pa ng nanay mo oh magugas ka na dito wag uh, ano to ang tamad-tamad mo wala ka nang ginagawa dito sa bahay but then again akala ano na to tatawagin ka ikaw maghuhugas ano so yung iba siguro is sila yung naghuhugas now, waiting for you to uh, wash them. Sometimes, after doing your responsibilities, you also check your social media okay? account, uh, social media accounts to cope with the latest news and trends. Siyempre, maging kayo pag-chismisan ka, chismisan ka muna sa mga uh, kaklase mo kung ano yung nangyayari, kung ano yung uh, latest news to sa school or whatsoever to sa mga ganap. Okay? And catch up with your distant friends. Now, have you ever wondered how, why do you, why can you can manage or you, why you can do such things even though pagod na pagod kena is parang ang dami pa rin energy. Okay, is it, uh, it, it is as if you've got plenty of energy stored inside you that helps you in accomplishing this. So in between doing these things, you either eat or rest to recharge. Diba? So eating... It's one of the best things to do to regain our energy, our strength. Diba? Pag pagod na pagod ka siya. Especially sa mga hindi mahilig kumain dyan ng umagahan pag pumapasok sa school. Diba minsan, uh, pag hindi kayo pumapas, uh, pag pumapasok kayo na hindi kayo kumakain, is para feeling nyo ang hihina kayo. It's because wala kayong, after that long hours of sleep, tapos hindi kayo kumain ng umagahan, eventually, mahubos talaga yung energy ninyo. Okay, not only, uh, not only does it fill our empty stomachs, but it also gives us enough energy or strength to do the things we need to accomplish. So eating is an essential part of our lives because it is one of the ways that we can survive. Okay, not unless kaya niyong mabuhay na hindi kumakain. Okay, when we eat, our foods get tested in our bodies to obtain substantial, essential substances and nutrients. Remember, again, metabolism, we eat food and that food is converted into this what we call energy. However, to carry out uh, numerous varieties of activities, our cells needs energy. So yung energy na nakukuha natin dun sa mga food na kinakain natin, yun yung ginagamit ng cells natin para mag-function tayo normally. 
Okay, the energy used by our body cells is obtained and processed from the food we eat. How can this energy be produced from food or where is it produced? Now, in this one, all right. So let me proceed now. Cellular respiration. Okay. <clears throat> so, nung kanina, sa photosynthesis, na meron, na pagkatapos ng photosynthesis, merong stored energy yung mga plants ninyo in the form of your glucose with the chemical formula kanina na C6H12O6. Okay? So, as since these plants contains this uh, glucose, Glucose then is considered as the primary source of energy in humans. Okay? Yung glucose kasi, yan yung gagamitin natin mamaya para sa cellular respiration. The body uses available glucose to produce energy. In the excess of glucose in the blood, the liver normally stores it in the form of your glycogen. Remember, pag meron tayong, uh, ito, meron tayong excess na glucose dun sa uh, blood natin, specifically, uh, pagkain, marami tayong kinakain ng mga, uh, mga carbohydrates. Yan, yung excess glucose na yan na i-store sa may glycogen natin. Kaya minsan, kahit, pag, pag, ano, kahit hindi tayo kumain ng, ng on time, is meron pa rin tayong uh, stored energy dun sa liver natin in the form of your glycogen. Okay? The liver can store the excess glucose from the blood uh, with the help of your insulin that is produced by your pancreas. So, Remember, insulin is uh, ano ito? Uh, normal. Uh, norm, it's not normal. It's uh, uh, I forget the term. It's uh, naturally produced. Uh, naturally, chemi uh, naturally produced chemical by our pump. Yes. Okay. This insulin also affects the ability of cells to absorb your glucose to be used in your cellular respiration from your blood. So, in certain con con uh, conditions such as uh, ex excessive na Accessive glucose. Wait lang. Okay. So in certain conditions, uh, such as excessive, uh, uh, let's say, sa mga mahilig iminom ng alcohol, I hope wala pa sa inyo. So the pancreas does not function well, which causes the insulin level to decrease. Okay, when the situation gets worse, people whose pancreas do not function well may develop this diabetes. Okay? So, yung diabetes kanina is... Ay, uh, yung diabetes. This diabetes is characterized by this lack of insulin or resistance to insulin. Okay? Hindi tayo nakakapag-produce ng uh, insulin kasi pag meron tayong diabetes. Okay? So, that's why people with diabetes have high level of sugar in their blood since the glucose cannot be absorbed by the cells for respiration. But when a normal level of insulin is present to balance the glucose uh, level, cellular respiration is not disrupted. Okay, that's very that's why it's very important. Na pag kumakain tayo ng mga we have to eat moderately. Dapat genius check natin kung ano yung mga kinakain natin. Kasi pag once na nagkaroon tayo ng diabetes, yung cellular respiration ang apektado. Okay? So that's why mostly lahat ng mga yung mga may diabetes is nang hihina sila. It's because hindi sila nakapag-produce ng enough energy during your cellular respiration. Kasi nadi-disrupt yung cellular respiration ninyo. Okay? So glucose is a high energy molecule that needs to be broken down uh, through the process of your cellular respiration. Now, the cellular respiration is a process that involves the oxidation and reduction of molecules to produce energy in the form of your adenosine triphosphate or your ATP. Okay? Now, oxidation is the process of losing electrons, while reduction is the process of gaining electrons. So cellular respiration uses oxygen molecules and releases carbon dioxide as one of its byproducts. In the shot. Sorry. Kung kanina, ang ginamit natin sa photosynthesis natin, it's your six molecules na carbon dioxide, na six molecules na H2O. Dito naman, kabaliktaran. Okay? Ang gagamitin natin, yung glucose, that's your oxygen. Okay? Now, 
This is the reason why humans and animals need to breathe in oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. It is the opposite of your photosynthesis, which requires carbon dioxide to start the process and release oxygen as its byproduct. Okay? Kung baga, nagkakaroon lang tayo ng... There's, kung baga, there is uh, a strong relationship between us, humans, and the plants. Bakit? Okay? If you're not going... If, if you... Uh, eh, ano to? Para sa pagmamahal lang din yan. Kung hindi mo bibigyan na pagmamahal yung plants mo, hindi ka bibigyan ng oxygen yan. That's why, let's say, that's why it's, it's very important you have to take care of your environment. You have to take care of your trees. Okay? Kasi sila yung nagbibigay talaga sa'yo ng buhay. Okay? Ngayon. Cellular respiration can happen into two conditions, with or without oxygen. Okay? So that is your aerobic respiration. Okay? It is the process of producing energy that uses oxygen, while anaerobic respiration is the process that does not use your oxygen. Okay? Aerobic, kailangan ng oxygen. Pag anaerobic naman, yan yung in the absence of your oxygen. Now, aerobic respiration... For your aerobic respiration, it's a process of breaking down organic molecules, organic nutrients from food, such as your glucose, to produce energy involving oxygen, oxygen molecules. So organisms that are exposed to an environment where oxygen is present do aerobic respiration to produce energy. So aerobic, aerobic respiration uh, involves four stages. So what are these four stages doing sa aerobic respiration niyo? This includes your glycolysis, your Krebs cycle, uh, your electron transport chain, and your chemiosmosis. First, for your glycolysis, okay, it's the first part of your aerobic respiration. It involves the breaking down of your glucose into your pyruvate, a three-carbon molecule. Okay, the product of glycolysis then enters the Krebs cycle in which Molecules are oxidized and electrons are picked up by the electron carriers, namely your NAD or your uh, the nicotinamide adenine di uh, dinucleotide and your FAD or your flavine uh, adenine dinucleotide. After that, okay, your Krebs cycle, ayun naman, yung Krebs cycle ninyo, gagamitin niya yung co acetyl coenzyme A. And for your Electron transport chain. Wait lang. Okay. The electrons uh, and your chemosmosis are the process of, of aerobic respiration that involve the oxidation of your electron carriers, which results in the production of your ATP and the formation of water through the re uh, reduction of your oxygen molecules. At the end of your aerobic respiration, there are 38 net ATP molecules produced. Okay? So later on, I will be dis uh, discussing in detail kung ano yung nagiging, uh, yung first stage ng aerobic respiration nyo. For an aerobic respiration naman, okay, an aerobic respiration uh, is the process by produ is the produ process of producing energy without uh, involving your oxygen. There is an absence of your oxygen. Okay? Glucose can be broken down to produce uh, energy without using oxygen. This happens in the muscle cells of humans and other prokaryotic organisms like methanogens and archaeon, uh, which uses carbon dioxide as the final electron acceptor instead of your oxygen. Okay? The process of an aerobic respiration is just the same as aerobic respiration. However, the final electron acceptor can be nitrate, sulfur, carbon dioxide instead of oxygen. Nung sa aerobic respiration kasi natin, ang final electron acceptor dun ay yung oxygen. Okay? While in your anaerobic respiration, the final acceptor there is nitrate, sulfur, and your carbon dioxide. Now, another way that an organism... Uh, 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 energy without involving oxygen is through this process called fermentation. In your fer fermentation, uh, the glycolysis happens in which uh, glucose is broken down into pyruvate. However, your pyruvate does not enter the Krebs cycle nor the electron transport chain. Instead, it undergoes fermentation and becomes a lactic acid or alcohol. Okay? So yung lactic acid, uh, lactic acid pag, na, uh, pag pinupulikat kayo, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, formation of your lactic acid. That's why 
Uh, bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng formation of your lactic acid? Because yung oxygen ninyo. Okay? Now, nawawalan kasi kayo, uh, nawawalan kasi tayo ng oxygen. That's why nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, formation of lactic acid. Pag nagkaroon tayo ng lactic acid formation, yun yung nagkakaroon tayo ng pulikat sa paa. Okay? Now, let me drink first. No. What is the role of your uh, mitochondria? Okay, so in this one, we have the different parts of your mitochondria, the outer membrane, inner membrane, and uh, crystal. So, in your membrane space and your matrix. Now, for the role of mitochondria in your cellular respiration, it is responsible for holding protons that are popped out of the matrix or your inter, um, uh, inter membrane space. Now, <clears throat> the mitochondria are the major sites of your energy production, or it's considered as the powerhouse of the cell. It's because mostly all the energy is produced in your mitochondria. Energy is produced through a process called your cellular respiration, and the mitochondria uh, play a vital role in this. So the number of mitochondria varies in each cell depending on the activities carried out by the cell. Like for example, at the muscle cells, it may contain thousands of your mitochondria because mostly yan yung ginagamit natin. Okay? Mostly ginagamit um, na ginagamit ng katawan natin is your uh, muscle since mas ma, mas uh, ano to, mas ginagamit natin yung muscles natin, eventually mas madami siyang mitochondria. Okay? So, if cells, uh, like the fat cells, do not need energy to function. Okay? Yung cell, yung fats natin, hindi natin, hindi yan kinakailangan ng uh, energy. Okay? So, they may only contain a few mitochondria. So, the structures of your mitochondria help it to efficiently function during your cellular respiration. So, your mitochondria, as what I mentioned, it has, it has your outer membrane, inner membrane. Uh, the, the folds is what you call the crystal. And the, you also have your intermembrane space and your matrix. Now, the end, outer membrane and the inner membrane of the cell create an intermembrane space. So this intermembrane space is responsible for holding the protons that are pumped out of the matrix. Now, the mitochondrial uh, matrix, uh, ito siya, it is where uh, the ATP synthesis and the Krebs cycles happen. So very specific siya. Okay, specific kung saan nangyayari yung Krebs cycle ninyo at yung ATP synthesis ninyo. It's in your mitochondrial matrix. Furthermore, the inner, the inner membrane of the mitochondria contains the proteins involved in the electron transport chain as well as the ATP synthase. So sa crystal ninyo, on the other hand, are the folds of the inner membrane which increases the surface area for ATP production. So yung crystal ninyo, yan yung nagiging increase ng air, air, uh, surface area for ATP production. Oh, it's a In every chemical reaction, there are reactants that start the process and products that are produced after a, uh, after or during the process. In your cellular respiration, the reactants are the glucose and oxygen molecules, while water uh, while uh, water carbon dioxide, and ATP molecules are the products. So in the general formula of your cellular respiration, glucose is oxidized for, uh, forming your carbon dioxide, while oxygen is reduced forming your uh, H2O or your water. Now, this gl glucose molecules uh, is considered as the simplest form of sugar and are the main source of your energy for humans and animals. Now, these molecules can be obtained from in uh, ingesting are di uh, digesting the food that we eat. Now, the glucose is used by the cells to generate energy in the form of ATP by undergoing cellular respiration, it's specifically your aerobic respiration. Now, during your cellular respiration, glucose is broken down and oxidized, resulting in the formation of your carbon dioxide molecule. Remember, pag yung glucose niyo is na-oxidize na siya, ibig sabihin na pa nag-lose siya ng electron ninyo. That's why not perform siya into your carbon dioxide. Uh, which is one, uh, again, carbon dioxide is one by uh, one uh, byproducts of your cellular respiration. Now, carbon dioxide as a byproduct of cellular respiration is expelled from the body through 
the lungs in exchange with oxygen that is obtained from the environment. While your oxygen okay, is also a reactant in cellular respiration, however, oxygen, oxygen is not used in the first stage of your cellular respiration. Rather, it is used only in the last stage, which is your electron transport gene. So, pag the start ng cellular respiration ninyo, ang ginagamit natin muna doon is your glucose. Okay? So, sa kanin natin nagagamit yung oxygen after or doon sa may last stage natin, which is your electron transport gene. Now, the electrons carried by the uh, NAD H and your FAD H are transferred to the electron transport chain. So, during the electron transport chain kasi, the NAD H and your FAD H are oxidized releasing the electrons which pass through the protein complexes in the inner membrane of your mitochondria. So after the electrons pass through the protein complexes, it will be captured by the oxygen molecules. So when the oxygen captures those electrons, it, it, it splits into two, then reacts with hydrogen ions forming your water. Okay. So therefore, the reactant and product of the electron transport chain are oxygen and water resp respectively. So that's why ang nagiging byproduct natin ay yung water ninyo. Now, let's start with your aerobic respiration. For your aerobic respiration, let's start with your glycolysis. So what is all about this glycolysis? Okay. So we have 10 steps of your glycolysis kasi later on. Which, uh, I will discuss it. Yeah. Am I going to discuss it anyway? Okay, for your glycolysis, <clears throat> let me drink water first. It is the first stage of your um, cellular respiration, this glycolysis. This stage in involves the breakdown of your six carbon sugar na glucose and the production of your pyruvate and your ATP molecules. <clears throat> so this glycoly glycolysis kasi, it happens in your cytoplasm. It's not in your mitochondria. Sa cytoplasm pa lang ito ng ER. Okay? So pagka-enter ng, uh, uh, ng glucose ninyo dun sa loob ng cell natin, dito, mag, dito na mag-start yung uh, cellular respiration. So during this stage, the oxygen oxidation of your glucose results in the release, release of your electrons. Thereafter, these electrons are picked by this NAD or your nicotinamide adenine, uh, nicot nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which is then reduced to your NAD H. Okay? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, this <coughs> Si, ayun, ma, pag na, uh, yung, ma oxidize si glucose niyo pag na oxidize si glucose niyo magre-release yung electrons. Yung electrons na yan, ay ipipick up yan ni NAD, NAD ninyo. Yun. Si yung dalawang NAD doon. So, yung nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Then, mare-reduce siya into your NAD age. Remember, yung NAD, in, into your NAD age is reduction. Okay? nag uh, nag uh, gain siya ng electron ninyo. Now, in this process, so here are the 10 steps of your glycolysis. First, we will have first the energy investment phase and later on, the energy invest uh, harvesting phase. So what is all about this energy investment phase? <clears throat> so the energy investment uh, investment stage starts with a breakdown of glucose and utilizes ATP molecules to drive the process. So hence, the term investment is use. Okay? Kailangan mo mag-invest muna. Okay? Uh, mag mag utilize ka, uh, magagamit ka kasi ng ATP molecules as an investment para mag-proceed yung uh, process. So by contrast, Later on, the energy harvesting stage produces your ATP molecules. O, diba? Gumamit ka ng ATP, pero makakapag-produce ka pa rin ng ATP as 
in your energy harvesting stage. Now, glycolysis happens in both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. So, and its main product, the pyruvate, okay, can either undergo your curve cycle or your fermentation. Remember, pag nag-undergo siya ng, uh, yung pyruvate ninyo, na-produce siya dun sa may glycolysis ninyo, remember, uh, pwede siya mag, uh, pwede siya mag-undergo or pwede siyang mag-proceed dun sa may Krebs cycle or your fermentation. Pag hindi nag-proceed yung pyruvate ninyo dun sa uh, Krebs cycle, ibig sabihin nun, fermentation yun. Okay? Pero pag nag-proceed naman yung pyru uh, pyruvate ninyo, yun yung tinatawag nating uh, Krebs cycle. <coughs> now, the primary reactant and product of your glycolysis, glycolysis are uh, glucose and your pyruvate. Glucose as your uh, reactant and your pyruvate as your product. Now, in the energy investment uh, phase, it starts with one glucose molecule with an investment of ATP molecule. So, kinakailangan muna natin ng ATP molecule dito para mag, ma, uh, makapag-proceed okay? yung isang glucose natin. So, during this stage, the glucose molecule is added with phosphate from your ATP, which results in the formation of your glucose 6-phosphate. Pag yung glucose ninyo, uh, yung glucose molecule ninyo, na, nagkaroon, siya, nagkaroon ng addition of your uh, inorganic phosphate. No? Remember, sa ADP-ATP cycle natin, pag na, mag, para mag-proceed yung isang uh, reaction, kailangan natin ng energy. So yung ATP na yan, yan yung energy natin dito. Okay, gagamitin niya ng glucose ninyo para ma-produce yung, uh, gagamitin niya yung isang inorganic phosphate para ma-produce yung glucose 6-phosphate. So, one phosphate group is used in this process. Thus, ATP will become ADP or your adenosine diphosphate. So, the addition of your phosphate molecule to glucose is your, called your phosphorylation. Now, this process is uh, catalyzed by the enzyme called hexokinase. Now, for the second step of your glycolysis, it involves the enzyme called your phos uh, phosphoglucose isomerase. Ito naman siya. This is the uh, pangalito, the second stage or step two of your uh, glycolysis. Now, in this one, in this reaction, uh, it becomes your uh, fructose 6-phosphate. So your glucose 6-phosphate and your uh, fructose 6-phosphates are isomers. Uh, molecules, they, they are molecules with the same chemical formula but differ in structure. As you can see, that's why it, it is called uh, as your uh, phosphoglucose uh, isomerase because they are isomers. Pag sinabi mo kasing isomers, pareho sila ng, uh, pareho sila ng uh, chemical formula, pero ang pinagkaibahan nila is your, uh, para ito, yung structure ninyo. Like for example, in this one. Mapapa, makikita naman ninyo. Ano yung highlighter nito? Ito siya. Kung nakikita ninyo, eh wala. But wala, walang... Ayan. Ito. This one, pareho, pareho lang sila ng, ano, pareho lang sila ng uh, chemical formula Pero sa isang part na to, magkaiba sila ng structure. Okay? So, ito yung tinatawag nating isomer. And the step 3, so step 3 naman natin, or the third step of your uh, glycolysis, it involves the phosphorylation of your fructose 6-phosphate by adding one phosphate group from your ATP molecule. Again, gagamit na naman tayo ng ATP dito. Okay? So, yung ATP na yan, magkakaroon na naman siya na, mabre-break down na naman siya into your ADP kasi kukunin natin yung isang uh, inorganic phosphate. Pag yung inorganic phosphate na yan, nadagdag siya dun sa may fructose 6-phosphate natin, magiging fructose 1,6-biphosphate naman. Okay? So, ang gagamitin natin enzyme dyan para, ma uh, para magkaroon ng reaction is your phosphofructokinase. Now, this phosphorylation results in the formation of your fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Bakit siya 1,6-biphosphate? Uh, uh, fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Remember, yung first carbon niya kasi meron siyang attached na phosphate doon. 
while dun sa my last na or yung pang six na carbon niya is may attach siya na another by uh, na another phosphate ito siya okay so drawing ko ito this is the sixth carbon while this is the first uh, carbon yung first carbon niyo meron siyang attach attach na inorganic phosphate dito sa pangalawa meron siyang attach na naman na another phosphate. So, pagpapangalanan natin itong uh, chemical formula na to, or, yeah, gagawa tayo ng chemical formula, that would be your fructose 1. Because, oh, nasa first carbon yan, while your second, uh, last inorganic phosphate is yung nasa 6 carbon ninyo. That's why it is called as your fructose 1, 6 by phosphate. Now, the fourth step, Ayan. Ito yung fourth step na rin. The fourth step naman, in your glycolysis, it involves the cleaving of your fructose 1,6-biphosphate into isomers na uh, DAP or your dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Okay? And your 3G3P or your uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So this process is catalyzed by an enzyme called your adolase. So the third and fourth... Uh, uh, ito yung third and fourth glycolysis niyo. Okay. So, magiging kwan lang siya. Uh, yung maghihiwalay yung dalawang isomers niyo. Okay. Again, bakit na naman siya naging isomers? Because of the presence, uh, they have the same chemical formula. Pareho silang chemical formula. formula. Pero, magkahiba sila ng structure. Okay. Yung two... Uh, bond niya kasi nasa sec, dito sa may uh, dihydrox, hydroxy acetone phosphate is nasa pangalawang carbon. While in your uh, pangalan nito, while in your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is nasa unang uh, pangalan nito, nasa unang carbon. And another, yung inorganic phosphate niyo dito is nasa pangatlo, while in this one, nasa una siya. Okay? Now, for the fifth step of your uh, glycolysis, uh, which is also the last step in your energy investment phase, it involves the transfer transformation of your DAP into your uh, into uh, G3P. So this process is catalyzed by uh, this what we call the tri triose uh, triose phosphate isomeries, uh, which is an enzyme that causes a molecule to transform into its isomers. So, DAP needs to transform into uh, G3P so that it can move to the second phase of your glycolysis or your, the, or your energy harvesting phase. So, the energy investment phase of your glycolysis utilizes a total of two ATP, ATP molecules for every glucose molecules. Now, the phosphate molecules from ATP are transferred to molecules are to glucose and fructose 6-phosphate. So phosphorylation of these uh, molecules need to happen to prevent them from leaving the cell. Now, let us move to your energy harvesting phase. So what is all about this energy harvesting phase naman? At paano siya mag -uumisa? In this one, for the energy harvesting phase, okay, or your uh, step six na to, ATP molecules and not H are formed okay in this energy harvesting phase so there are two g3p molecules that will enter the energy uh three energy uh, uh that will enter the energy har uh, harvesting phase so the sixth step in your glycolysis involves the oxidation and phosphorylation of these g3p molecules so this process is catalyzed by the enzyme called glycer glyceraldehyde three phosphate the hydrogenase. Now, during the oxidation of this G3P, the hydrogen atoms are released and picked up by the NAD or your nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide to form your NADH. While in your, uh, during the phosphorylation naman, a free and organic phosphate from uh, the cell cytosol is combi combined to your G3P to form this 1,3 by phosphoglycerate. So, ito siya. Ito yung ma-produce. Your NADP 
ay ito yung glycerol dahil din niyo pag na ah, pag na ano ito pag na oxidize siya yung hydrogen atoms niyo okay yung hydrogen atoms niyo marerelease pag na-release siya ipipick up ngayon siya ng nad niyo ito yung nad niyo okay at magiging nad H siya. In this one naman, okay, magkakaroon ng phosphorylation. Okay. So yung inorganic phosphate niyo maa-add siya dito. So that's why, magiging 1,3 by phosphoglycerate siya. Because, again, first carbon dioxide, our carbon is meron siyang attached na phosphate And yung third ninyo, meron na naman siyang attached na phosphate. Okay? So the next step here, or step seven for your glycolysis, it involves the release of the phosphate molecule from your uh, B BGP or your 1,3 by phos uh, phosphoglycerate, which now becomes your 3 uh, phosphoglycerate or your 3 PGA. So in this process is catalyzed by the enzyme uh, phosphoglyco. Uh, glycerokinase. Now, the phosphate release uh, from BGP will be picked up by the ADP to form your ATP. So, magkakaroon na tayo ng for, uh, formation of your ATP, which considered as your energy uh, na har ma-harvest later on. So, in this process, one ATP molecule is produced for every three PGA. Okay? So, sa bawat uh, process, meron tayong ma-produce na three Uh, na molecule from your 3 PGA. Now, the next step or the eighth step of your glycolysis, okay, so the 3 PGA becomes your 2 phosphoglycerate, okay, through an enzyme called your phosphoglycerolmutase. So this enzyme transfer, uh, transfers a uh, phosphate group from the third uh, carbon of 3 PGA to its second carbon which results in the uh, uh, two phosphoglycerate. Okay? So the numbers before and between the names of the molecules involved in glycolysis present the location of your phosphate in their structure. So in the ninth step, ito, so my ninth step natin. Okay. So ninth step naman. Oh, sorry for that. Okay. So in ninth step, 2 PGA becomes your phosphoenol pyruvate or your PEP, which is accomplished by the removal of water from your 2 PGA through the enzyme called your enolase. Okay. So lastly, PEP then releases its phosphate. Okay? Pag na-release yung phosphate ninyo, eventually, okay, mapipick up siya ni ADP again to form your ATP. So nagkaroon na naman tayo na harvesting of your ATP. So this process is catalyzed by your pyruvate kinase. And the result in the formation of your pyruvate and your ATP molecules. Then, uh, <coughs> now, the products of this uh, glycolysis, again, nung sa energy harvesting, meron lang tayong dalawang molecules na naproduce. Okay? Now, for the product of your glycolysis, <clears throat> the energy in, uh, uh, energy investment and the energy harvesting phase of your glycolysis can be likened to a fi uh, parang sa financial investment. Okay? Kanina, there is an initial amount. Okay? We'll let, uh, that will let us earn more than what you have invested. Di ba? Pag nagkakaroon ka ng investment, like, let's say, isang molecule sana. So, dun sa isang molecule sa yun, pwede kang mag-harvest ng, uh, ng dalawang ATP molecule. Okay? So, in the in energy investment, two molecules of ATP are utilized. So, gumamit tayo ng eight, dalawang ATP 
dun sa energy investment phase natin. While in the energy harvesting uh, phase, one phosphate group from the BGP is removed and transferred to ADP to form your ATP. Okay, anak isang uh, ATP na yun na produce. Furthermore, in PEP, it releases its phosphate and uh, transferred to ADP to form your ATP. So there is a total of two ATP molecules that is produced from one molecule of 3GP, G3P, I should say. Aside from ATP, NAD each is also produced. Okay, when G3P is oxidized to form your BG, B, PG, which is a hydrogen atom, uh, which hydrogen atom is released from it and is picked up by your NAD to form your NAD. H. So since there are two molecules of G3P involvement in the energy harvestment phase, the number of ATP and uh, NAD H produced should be doubled. So therefore, there are four ATP and two NAD H molecules produced during the energy harvesting phase of your glycolysis. However, it should be noted that there are only two molecules of ATP used during the energy investment phase which should be deducted from the total number of ATP produced. So hence, a net total of ATP molecules are produced during the whole process of your glycolysis. Okay? Now, aside from the... next. Uh, now, aside from the one, aside from the ATP and that pH, the pyruvate or pyruvic acid is also considered as one of the major products of your glycolysis. Kasi siya yung last na produce ni, na produce during uh, in the of the process. This molecule is essential to the whole process of your cellular respiration because it will help initiate the Krebs cycle. Siya yung para starting molecule ng Krebs cycle niyo, yung pyruvate. However, before entering the Krebs cycle. The pyruvate undergoes oxidation to form your acetyl, acetyl group during your transition reaction. Okay, your Krebs cycle is considered as a transition reaction. Ah, dun sa may pyruvic, uh, reaction, uh, pyruvate reaction ninyo, yan yung tinatawag natin transition reaction. Okay, the electrons released during the oxidation of pyruvate are picked by the NAD to form your NAD H. Then the acetyl group reacts with your coenzyme A, forming you your acetyl CoA. Okay, it is the acetyl CoA that enters the Krebs cycle and reacts with your oxalo oxalo acetate, or it is a reactant of the Krebs cycle. Now, let us proceed with your Krebs cycle. Now, if one if ano na to? if uh, you are willing to listen pa. I will, I'm, I'm going to finish this discussion to say so that I can give you the recording. Okay? But you can already leave the meeting if you want to because I don't want, uh, since may pasok pa yung iba sa inyo bukas. Okay? So let's proceed with your Krebs cycle. Now for your Krebs cycle naman, okay, medyo mahaba-haba to. Okay. Ed cycle. <clears throat> now, Hans Adolf Krebs, all right, the Germ uh, he is a G uh, German British. He is the one who discovered the uh, Krebs cycle in 1930s. That's in the honor of his discovery and pioneering study, the pathway was named after him. Okay. So the Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle or your tricarboxylic acid cycle because citric acid is the, uh, is the first product okay, which is composed of your three carboxylic uh, carboxyl groups. Now, like this one. Ito yung naproproduce kasi. Okay, so that's why it is also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle because ang naproproduce dito is uh, yung carboxyl groups ninyo. Now, in this, uh, in our discussion, this discussion, 
we will need uh, two pyruvate molecules. So these molecules carry a lot of energy in them that they still need to undergo a series of process to maximize energy generation. So in the presence of oxygen, of course. The pyruvate produced from glycolysis undergoes your uh, Krebs cycle. Now, pyruvate enters the mitochondrion. where it has to be oxidized first before entering your curve cycle. So the resulting molecule from the oxidation of your pyruvate is your acetyl-CoA-enzyme A that enters your curve cycle. Now, the, and undergoes a series of oxidation and reduction. So as a result of this, uh, for this process, it yields your carbon dioxide and the, elect uh, and the electron carriers, your NADH and your FADH. For the transition reaction, let's start with this one. The pyruvate, a tricarbon molecule, cannot immediately enter the Krebs cycle. So it must first undergo your oxidation to become another molecule that can enter the pathway. So after glycolysis, pyruvate, uh, pyruvate, pyruvate molecules enter the mitochondrion, given that the condition is aerobic. Kasi nabi nani aerobic, there is a presence of, there is a presence of your oxygen. So upon entering, your pyruvate is converted into your acetyl coenzyme A. So this process starts when the carboxylic group in pyruvate is uh, removed and released as your carbon dioxide. So this is what you call the decarboxylation. Okay. So it also results in the formation of your two carbon molecules. Then these two carbon molecules undergoes oxidation and becomes your acetate. Ito siya. Pag na-produce yung carbon dioxide na yan, dalawang carbon dioxide na yan, magiging yung, uh, ano to, magiging, ano, magkakaroon ng uh, oxidation, then it will become your acetate. Now, the electrons released from the oxidation nung car two carbon molecules niyo is matatransfer siya dun sa nat not dinyo, or your nicotinamide adenine diphosphate, which, or the nucleotide, I should say, which then becomes your NAD H. So, nag turn siya from your NAD to your NAD H. Okay? The acetate molecule, oh, the acetate molecule reacts with a sulfur containing compound, which is your, which is your uh, coenzyme A, and as a result, Pag nagkaroon sila ng uh, reaction, yung acetate ninyo and your sulfur-containing uh, compound na coenzyme A, maproproduce yung acetyl-coenzyme A. Okay? So the whole process of your uh, pyruvate oxidation or transition reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. Ang kinakailangan natin na enzyme dito is yung pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, for the mechanism of your Krebs cycle, Okay, let's start with this one. For the mechanism of your curve cycle, it starts with your acetyl coenzyme A from the transition reaction kanina, with which uh, with in which it will react with your oxalo oxaloacetate, which is a scar four carbon molecule. Now, pag nakaroon sila ng reaction, ma-produce naman or magkakaroon tayo ng formation of your citric acid sa citric acid citric acid or your citrate which is your R6 carbon molecule. So this process is catalyzed by this, what we call the citrate synthase. Now, citrate uh, synthase will undergo, uh, undergoes uh, isomerization and becomes your isocitrate. Bakit na naman siya iso, isomer, uh, tinatawag na uh, isomers? It's because the presence of, uh, ano to? Meron tayong dalawang pareho sila ng chemical formula pero magkaiba sila ng structure. Now, which results in the formation uh, paano nagkakaroon ng ano, paano nasisynthesize uh, for a moment, please. Okay, so as what I mentioned, this citrate undergoes isomerization and becomes your isocitrate via the enzyme uh, 
holidays. So the isomerization involves the arrangement of the atoms of your citrates, which results in the formation of its isomers or your isomers isocitrate. Okay, then this isocitrate undergoes oxidation, which results in the formation of your alpha ketoglutarate. Ito naman siya. Okay, or it's it's a five carbon uh, molecule. So the oxid uh, oxidation of your isocitrate causes the release of this carbon dioxide and the reduction of your NAD to your NADH. Or naggain ng electron yung NAD ninyo, that's why naging NADH siya. Or nagkaroon siya ng reduction. So this process is catalyzed by the isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now, the next, the next uh, step here would be uh, it involves the oxidation of your alpha-ketoglutarate, which is catalyzed by your alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So carbon dioxide is released. And this NADH H is nagkaroon ng reduction. That's why naging NAD H siya during your process. So which which leaves uh, only your car four carbon molecule behind. Now the four carbon molecule then reacts with your coenzyme A, which forms the succinyl coenzyme A. So this process is catalyzed by succinyl uh, succinyl coenzyme uh, A synthetase. So afterward, now. It is yeah. Okay. Afterward, uh, the coenzyme A from your succinyl coenzyme A is replaced by the phosphate uh, group. Uh, however, the phosphate group is immediately transferred to your GDP or your guanosine diphosphate to form your GDP or your guanosine triphosphate. So uh, um, a, sim a molecule similar to this ATP in terms of function. So remember, sabi ko nga kanina, ay nung last na discussion natin, meron tayong different uh, ano to, different forms of your uh, molecules like that functions as in ATP, your GTP, your CTP, TTP, and your ATP. So yung apat na yun. So this process uh, results in the formation of the four carbon molecule succinate. Now, the succinate, ito siya, ay, what, what nandito na? Ito yung susinate ninyo, and this is a car four carbon molecule, is oxidized, uh, oxidized to form your fumarate. So another four carbon molecule. Now the oxidation of your susinate to produce your fumarate causes two hydrogen molecules to be released from your susinate. So sa susinate ninyo, marirelease yung dalawang hydrogen molecule. Okay, pag narelease yung dalawang hydrogen molecule na yun, is ma mabubuo naman yung fumarate ninyo. Ma magkakaroon ng oxidation yung succinate and fumarate will be uh, produced. Now, this hydrogen molecule, uh, hydrogen molecules are transferred to your FAD. Pag na-transfer yung hydrogen molecules ninyo into your FAD, which is reduce. Pag, pag sinabi mo again na reduce, is nag-gate ng electron. Okay? So that's why naging FAD H siya. So this process is called uh, catalyzed by succinic hydrogenase. Then afterwards, the next step here, yung fumarate naman ninyo, it receives a water molecule which results in the formation of your malate, which is a carb for carbon molecule again. So the addition of water to fumarate is catalyzed this by, uh, by, by this what we call fumarase. And lastly, yung malate ninyo, Ma-oxidize siya. Pag sinabi mo ma-oxidize, ma ma mag-release siya ng uh, electron. Okay? So it becomes your oxalo, oxaloacetate. Now, the oxidation of your malate causes the reduction, nakakaroon din siya ng reduction of your NAD, uh, NAD to your NAD age. Remember, pag na-oxidize si malate, okay, since this is a redox reaction, si malate ninyo na-oxidize, nag-release siya ng all, anang, anang, uh, electron, yung electron na yun napupunta kay NAD. Okay? So yung NAD na yun nagiging NAD H. Naggain siya ng electron. Okay? So this process is catalyzed by this malate dehydrogenase. So when oxalo oxaloacetate reacts with your acetyl coenzyme A, another round of Krebs cycle takes place. Thus, one cy uh, cycle always uh, cycle, a cycle always regenerates 
oxaloacetate. Now, ano yung mga products na naproproduce during your Krebs cycle? The process of your Krebs cycle starts with a conversion kanina ng pyruvate ninyo into your acetyl coenzyme A. Now, it should be noted that, this, uh, that after your glycolysis, every glucose molecule yields two pyruvate molecules. So sa, sa bawat glycolysis ninyo, is dalawang uh, pyruvate, yung, uh, pyruvate molecules yung naproproduce. Thus, the Krebs cycle happens twice for each round of your glycolysis. Sa bawat round ng glycolysis ninyo na uulit din yung Krebs cycle ninyo. So in this case, so all products of the Krebs cycle uh, will be doubled to account for every glu glucose molecule that undergoes glycolysis. So in this one, Ito siya. So, ito, sa kwanin nyo, ito, ito lang, pagigitin natin. Uh, the first one, okay, so the oxidation of your pyruvate to acetyl, acetyl coenzyme A, the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, ang nagiging uh, pro, uh, product natin dito is your carbon dioxide plus your NADH. At ang naproproduce na carbon dioxide is, dito is your is dalawa, while in your NADH, it's dalawa also. Okay? The next one is the oxidation of your isocitrate to your alpha-ketoglutarate. So, dito na produce yung uh, carbon dioxide plus your NADH. So, again, dalawang carbon dioxide plus dalawang NADH na naman ang naproduce. So, in total, bakit wala dito? There are four carbon dioxides now and your four NADH. H. For the next one, ito naman, the oxidation of your alpha-ketoglutarate to your succinyl uh, uh, coenzyme A. So, ilan yung naproproduce dito? Uh, ano yung naproproduce dito? It's your carbon dioxide plus your NADH. So, dalawang carbon dioxide, dalawang NADH. That's why, ang total lang na carbon dioxide dito is 6, while your NADH is 6 na rin. Now, the next is... Uh, the oxidation of your succinate to your fumarate. Uh -huh. so, the fumarate. Succinate to your fumarate. Now, in this one, ang uh, naproproduce napro 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 dito is your FADH naman. Okay, dalawang FADH. Now, the release in the next one, the release of your uh, phosphate group from your succinyl coenzyme A, yung G GTP ninyo, dalawa, in your, and the oxidation of your malate to your oxaloacetate, ito siya, is uh, NADH na dalawa. So, suma total, the transition uh, reaction yields your two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of NADH, in the Krebs cycle, there are a total of 6 NADH molecules, 4 carbon dioxide, 2 and 2 FADH molecules ang naproduce. So these molecules are produced from the oxidation of your pyruvate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinate, and germalate. So the NADH and FADH molecules will enter the next stage of your cellular respiration. So the electron transport chain, while your carbon dioxide is released to the environment through your respiratory organs such as lungs. Dito pala sa Krebs cycle na to, yung carbon dioxide ninyo, nare-release na siya dun sa, uh, apupunta na siya sa lungs natin, then eventually, yan yung i-breathe out natin. Now, the GTP produced in the Krebs cycle has the same function of as the ATP. So, it can be considered equivalent to your two ATP molecules since pareho lang sila ng uh, function. Okay? So, and can be read, uh, it will be uh, readily available to be used uh, by the cell. So here are the, uh, here is the, uh, here is the overall reaction for your uh, transition reaction in your curve cycle. So in this one, for your transition reaction, there are two pyruvate plus two coenzyme A plus two NAD, which will give us the product 
two acetyl coenzyme A plus two molecules of your carbon dioxide and your two NAD H or energy uh, per year. Uh, NAD H. Your curve cycle, we're going to use this uh, we'll go, we're going to use this uh, byproduct of your transition reaction for this curve cycle to occur. So your two co acetyl coenzyme A plus six NAD H plus two FAD H plus two ADP plus two in organic phosphate will give us this four carbon dioxide, two acetyl coenzyme, uh, two coenzyme A plus six NAD H plus two FAD H plus two GTP. Now, so ito ngayon, sa crab cycle niyo, yung carbon dioxide, mare-release yan. Okay. Well, in this one, GTP, gagamitin yan ng cell niyo as an energy also. But this one, gagamitin natin to for your chemiosmosis and electron transport chain. Okay? So ito siya. Okay, so I'll uh, finish the discussing this uh, electron transport chain and later on. And tomorrow, I will be discussing some uh, some uh, important matters again. So uh, just stay for a while. Next would be your electron transport chain. For this electron transport chain, naman, okay. So, ito yung mga nagiging products ng glycolysis and Krebs cycle natin. Your ADP, NADH, H, and your FAT H. Ito yung gagamitin natin for this electron transport chain naman. Okay? So, these electron carriers transport the electrons to the inner, mem inner membrane of your mitochondria where they are used in the electron transport chain or your chemiosmosis. So, there are four proteins embedded in the inner membrane of your mitochondrion that forms this transport complex. So this protein complex receives the electrons from your NADH H and your FAD H. Consequently, hydrogen ions from the matrix, the central and the innermost region, are pumped through your active transport into the inner, in, uh, in, into your intermembrane space. So these hydrogen ions plays an important role in the phosphorylation of your ADP to produce your ATP through the process of your chemiosmosis. So both the uh, electron transport chain and chemosmosis uh, constitute this what we call the oxidative phosphorylation. So this uh, mechanism of ATP synthesis involves the oxidation of your NADH H and your FAT H to generate the energy that will be phosphorylate uh, ADP to your ATP. Now, in this one, the kabuuan ng complexes ng mitochondrial membrane natin. Okay. So, we have different uh, complexes kasi dito. So, we have complex 1, complex 2, and ubiquinone, complex 3, complex 4, ETC, and your proton pumps. So, anong mangyayari dito? For the first complex, uh, first protein complex that receives electrons from your NADH is what you call the complex 1. So, this is the embedded, this is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane alongside with, uh, with your complexes 2 and your 4. So, complex 1 in your has two molecular components that undergo reduction and oxidation or your redox reactions once they receive and release these electrons. Now, the first molecule, okay, the first molecule uh, that accepts the electrons from your NADH is your flavoprotein. So this molecule contains a prosthetic uh, group called your flavin, uh, flavin uh, mononucleotide, which is uh, which uh, or your FMN. Now, the, redu the reduction of your FMN happens when it receives the electrons from the oxidation of your NADH to your na NAD. Okay? So, yung NAD ninyo dito, magagamit siya. Okay? Yung uh, NAD dito, ito, ito, so yung NAD ninyo dito, NADH ninyo, gagamitin siya, marerelease yung isang electron ninyo. Bakit nagre-release tayo ng electron ninyo. Okay? Para ma uh, magkaroon tayo ng uh, tinatawag nating flavin mononucleotide or your FMN. Kasi si flavin mononucleotide niya, kinakailangan niya ng electron. Okay? Itong FMN natin. Ngayon, 
ito uh, yung uh, electron natin are then transferred to the second molecule okay so pag na receive na ni FMN yung uh, electron na galing kay uh, nad H no yung electron na yon is matatransfer siya dun sa second molecule which is your iron sulfur uh, protein okay ito siya And eventually, the FMN is then oxidized, while FES is reduced. Pag sinabi na na, again, ma-oxidize si FMN ninyo dito sa part na to, okay? Pag na-oxidize siya, si FES center naman ninyo, ma-re-reduce siya. Ibig sabihin yan, mag-gain siya ng electron. At pag nangyari yun, uh, ito na siya. Okay. The transfer of electrons allows complex 1 to actively pump hydrogen from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Now, for the complex 2, ito siya, on, or your ubiquinon, ano, man ang, ano, ano naman ang nangyari dito? So, although located near each other, they uh, differ in function. So, ubiquinon or your Q is a mobile hydrophobic molecule that receives electrons from your FES found in both complexes 1 and 2. So unlike your complex uh, 2, uh, or your complex 2 does not receive uh, electrons from, your, from the oxidation of your NADH. H. Instead, it accepts electrons from the oxidation of your FAD H to FAD naman. Sa complex 2 ninyo, Ang mangyayari dito, magdo-donate or yeah, marerelease -re yung uh, para ito. Magkakaroon siya ng uh, oxidation ng fat H ninyo into your fat. Okay? So complex 2 contains your succinate dehydrogenase and your FES or your iron sulfur, uh, iron and sulfur, which also undergo reduction and oxidation once the complex receives and releases your electrons. This succinate uh, dehydrogenase, okay, the enzyme that is also used in your curve cycle is bound to uh, FAD or flavine adenine dinucleotide molecule. Now, once FADH is oxidized, the complex releases the electrons to form your FAD no, and moves them from your uh, iron sulfur. Then the electrons from the uh, iron sulfur uh, located in complex 2 are transferred to your ubiquinol, which becomes your uh, ubiquinol or your QH2. Okay? Pag na-reduce na yung ubiquinol ninyo. Ubiquinol is the reduced form of your ubiquinol. So moreover, unlike complex 1, complex 2 does not pop protons into the intermem intermembrane space. Now, after that, You will now have your complex three. What is all about this complex three? For your complex three, the electrons uh, FES uh, proteins in your complex one and two, which are carried by the mobile carrier uh, ubiquinol or your QH2, are transferred to your complex three. So this complex contains three molecules, namely your cytochrome B or your C CYT B, uh, Riesca, Riesca. Uh, center or your 2FE uh, 2FE and 2S center and the cytochrome or C1 or CYT1 CT1 C1 cytochromes are proteins that contain a hemigroup containing an iron of an iron atom so iron uh, contains or iron atoms in the cytochromes are responsible for receiving and donating your electrons okay cytochromes also differ in the number of your hemigroups the uh, CYT uh, B contains two hemigroups, whereas your CYT C1 has only one. Okay, so that's why you write from the word C1. Now, the electrons uh, from your uh, complex one and uh, two are carried by this ubiquinol, which can carry a total of two electrons. So after uh, being reduced, your ubiquinol uh, moves and attaches to the complex three and oxidizes into your ubiquinol. So a series of events will then takes place. Okay. In this one, uh, the first electron
Ayan. First electron, released by QH or your ubiquinol, you, you, QH2 or your ubiquinol, ubiquinol is transferred to your Ryaska center to CYTC1. Oh. When you transfer na siya to your CYTC1, then the CYTC1 uh, or cytochrome C1 transfer the electron to the cytochrome C. Okay? Pag na-transfer na siya into your cytochrome C, which is also considered as a mobile uh, or mobile or mobile carrier of electrons similar to ubiquinon, cyto cyto uh syn at cytochrome C transfers electrons from complex 3 to your complex 4. Okay? However, it can only carry one electron at a time. Since ubiquinol carries two electrons, one of its electrons processed through another pathway. So the second electron is transferred to your CYTB or your cytochrome B, then to another molecule of uh, ubiquinone located in your complex 3. So your ubiquinone is converted into its reduced form, your, uh, your semiqui, semi quinone radical ion. Then, uh, when another ubiquinol arrives at the complex three, it is oxidized again to your ubiquinol. Okay. One electron of your ubiquinol is transferred to the Ryaska, Ryaska center, then to the CYT C1, or yours and CYT, or your cytochrome C. On the other hand, the second electron is transferred to CYT B and the uh, semiquinone radical ion. So, since your uh, semiquinone radical ion receives another electron or your, it becomes your ubiquinol. So this ubiquinol molecule is eventually released to the inner membrane of the mitochondrial. This process is called the uh, ubiquinol cycle. So it is Yeah. Now, for the complex fours, four, no. medyo madugulang, Okay, so complex four, the stepwise reduction, uh, it is a stepwise reduction. So it is the last place where electrons are transferred be, uh, before they become your oxygen to form a water molecule. So this complex consists of your cytochrome A, cytochrome A3, a pair of copper, a, a, a copper A, and copper B, the mobile uh, cytochrome C, the travels from the uh, complex three to your complex four carries one electron. So this electron travels uh, to your uh, copper copper A to your to copper uh, to your cytochrome A and then to your uh, cytochrome A three, uh, which is your step one. When another cytochrome C arrives at the center of the complex four, the electron it carries follows the same pathway. Okay, so maybe uh, now for this electron transport chain. Okay, let's just proceed to your uh kung ilan yun na eight na yield na ATP. Now for this one, uh in the electron transport chain, no ATP molecules are produced yet. But the energy that will drive ATP synthesis is building up through the hydrogen ions. So these ions are pumped into the intermembrane space where they play a vital ro role in the production of your ATP. Chemiosmosis is the process by which hydrogen ions are used to power ATP synthase to phosphorylate ADP into ATP. Because hydrogen ions are used to produce ATP, the number of NADH H and fat H produced during your glycolysis and carb cycle must be accounted for. So as what we have previously uh, discussed like earlier, a total of NADH H and two fat H are produced during your glycolysis. So two NADH H, transition reaction, two NADH H, the Krebs cycle, six NADH H and two fat H, the electrons released from NADH H pass through complex one, three, and four. So as the electron pass through each complex, one hydrogen ion is, pump, ion is pumped to the intermembrane space. And therefore, one NAD H molecule is equivalent to three hydrogen ions. Okay, since each uh, hydrogen ion enables the ATP synthesis, 
to produce ATP, it should be noted uh, that for every molecule of your NADH, there are three ATP molecules produced. Okay? On the other hand, the electrons of your fat H that passes through your complex 2, 3, and 4. However, complex 2 is not capable of pumping hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space, while complex 3 and 4 can. So, hence, one molecule of fat H is now equivalent to your two hydrogen ions. So, there are two ATP molecules produced from the oxidation of your fat H. So, here is the summary of the products of the electron transport chain and your chemiosmosis. So since there are not 10 NAD H produced, so we will now have 30 ATP. And your FAD H, you will now have your 2 ATP, or yeah, 2 uh, FAD H, which is equivalent to 2 ATP. So we, we will now have your 4 mole, uh, 4 ATP. So the total ATP yield uh, for your electron transport chain and your chemiosmosis is your uh and at the top is your is 34 ATP molecules. So, saan na po, saan, kanina, sa carb cycle, kanina, ah, sa may uh, glycolysis, meron na tayo na produce na dalawang ATP. So, 34 plus 2 is 36 ATP molecules. Okay? So, I think uh, we will continue next meet, uh, tomorrow for, uh, since this aerobic respiration na, na lang naman na. So, yeah. I'll be sending this uh, recording. This, uh